Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Hamza Javed and in this video we'll be fine-tuning a pre-trained VGG16 model. Just to give you a quick recap, in the previous video we trained our model, then we displayed how it performed, we displayed a couple of plots for accuracy and loss, then we predicted a class and then we compared it to the actual image. In this video we won't be building the model from scratch, we'll be using a pre-trained model instead and we'll fine-tune it. So first of all we'll be importing VGG16 from TensorFlow, Keras, application. So let's go ahead and run this. The next thing we need to do is instantiate the VGG16 model and this could be done by calling this VGG16 function. Now this function expects a couple of parameters. The first one is include top and we have set it to false. The reason we have done that is we are only concerned about the convolution part of VGG16 network. Here you need to understand what convolutional neural network is made up of. A CNN usually contains a conf base which is convolution base and densely connected layers. Whenever you want to fine tune a pre-trained model, you're only concerned with the convolutional layers because it's the convolution part that has learned the edges, the texture and all the other features when it was trained previously. Now all you need to do is fine tune it according to your own problem and that could be done by training only the last densely connected layers, not the convolution part. The next argument would be weights and we will be using ImageNet weights because this model was trained for ImageNet competition back in 2014. Now I agree this is very old model but this is good enough and way better than our previously trained model. The input shape would be 100 by 100 by 3 now one thing I want you to observe here is this 3. Previously it was 1 here and that was because we were dealing with grayscale images. Now we are dealing with color images and all the color images have 3 channels, red, green and blue. VGG16 model was trained to work with colored images and that's why we are bound to provide the colored images. The last one is classes and we are setting it to 1 because we are dealing with the binary problem. Let's go ahead and run this block. As previously we printed a summary of our own model, now we are going to print the summary of VGG16 model. And just to give you a heads up, it's going to be a lot more complex than the one we previously built. Let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, we have got a couple of convolution layers, then we have got pooling layers, convolution layers, and pooling layers, and so on. So there are a couple of things that I want you to understand. The very first thing is the number of total parameters. This neural network has more than 14 million parameters. The second thing I want you to understand is look at the last layer over here. This is a pooling layer. All the models that we trained previously, they had a dense layer over here. And previously, it only had one neuron. But now you can see the output shape of this layer is 3 by 3 by 512. Something is wrong, right? Something is not quite adding up. The reason for that is, as I've told earlier, whenever we try to fine tune a model, we only take the convolution part. We don't care about the densely connected layers. Now what should we do? Because the model at its current stage isn't capable of providing us with the prediction. Since we haven't worked with VGG model before, we will be creating our sequential model that we are very familiar with and we will add all the layers from the VGG16 model in our model. Before we add a layer in our newly created model, we need to make sure one thing. We need to set trainable to false. So here's the thing. The VGG16 model has a lot of convolution layers. All the layers have a lot of parameters that are already trained previously. We want to leverage them and only want to tweak the dense layers. So that's why we are setting all the layers to trainable false so their weights don't get changed when we train. So as we have seen in the model summary, there are no dense layers in this model. So now we will be adding the dense layers. The first layer we will be adding to this model is flatten. The next one is a dense layer with 512 neurons and with ReLU as an activation function. Another thing that I would be introducing here is dropout. We use dropout when our model is overfitting to the training data. The last layer would be dense layer with only one neuron as we had in the previous videos. And the activation function we are using here is sigmoid. Let's go ahead and run this block. Okay, for your understanding, let me go ahead and print the summary of this model. All the layers belong to the VGG16 models. But observe, now we have a couple of more layers. And these are the layers that we have just added. The flatten layer, the dense layer with 512 neurons, the dropout layer with 512 neurons obviously, and the dense layer with only one neuron. Previously, the number of parameters were over 14 million, but now they are over 17 million. And that's because the layer we have just added have more than 2 million parameters. As usual, we'll be compiling the model, we'll specify our loss function, we'll specify the optimizer, and we'll specify the matrix we are concerned about. Let's go ahead and run this block. Okay, so now in this block, we are again leveraging image data generator to generate our training set. 
and the reason that we are doing this again is that previously we created the generator for grayscale images that is black and white images now that we know the vgg model only accepts color images we will be creating a data generator with the rgb value this could be done by just setting the color mode to rgb we will leave all the remaining attributes the same we will use this train generator to get our training data and training labels so let's go ahead and run this found 400 images belonging to two classes which is correct now i'm going to call the fit function on the model the first argument would be training data the next one would be training labels the validation split would remain the same which is 20 percent and the epochs would be 15. the reason we have reduced the number of epochs from 30 to 15 is that previously our model was very very simple this model is a complex one and would require more time for getting trained Let's go ahead and run this block and start the training. This model is going to take some time for training. I'll just pause the video and get back when it's done. As you can see, the training accuracy is 100%. The validation accuracy is 77%, which is a lot better than the previous model. Previously, our validation accuracy was fluctuating between 50 to 60%. Now it's 77% which is a significant improvement. So now we understand that model accuracy is something that could be improved using different techniques. Let's go ahead and display the results in the form of plots on our screen. So here, as you can see, the training accuracy moved from 50% to 100%, but the validation accuracy moved from 30% to 80%, which means our model is way better than the previous one. Training loss decreased from 2 to 0, and the validation loss decreased from 2 to 0 0.50. So here's the challenge for my viewers. I want you to train a model and achieve 95% or more accuracy. And I'm talking about the validation accuracy. If you can achieve more than 95% validation accuracy, just mention me in the comment section below and I'll give you a shout out in the next video. Let's verify the results. We'll choose the image on, let's say, 33rd index. We'll call it a test image. We'll call the predict classes method on our model. We'll get the predictions and we'll fetch the predicted class. We'll display the predicted class and also we'll be displaying the mapping for the labels. Lastly, we'll be displaying the actual image just to verify that the predicted class was actually true. So as you can see, the predicted class was 1 and it is a dog, which means that the model is performing pretty good. Let's try it with another image. Let's go with 12th. The predicted class is 1 and the actual image is of a dog. Let's try another one, 74. And again, our model is performing pretty fine. Predicted class 1, which means it's a dog and the actual image is of a dog. So that's about it from this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this mini series for building your own CNN model. I'm planning to create another mini series for you. So stay tuned. So people, that's about it from this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new. In case you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And in case you think that the video taught you something new, please share it with your juniors and your peers. Also, if you want to see more similar videos, please subscribe.